Many things actually do inspire my artworks. One of it is um, the Bible, because I was born into a religious family. And then secondly, women in general. And that's because I have five sisters. And of course, I've, I was able to learn so many things from that. I was able to see life from a different perspective entirely. And then thirdly, human nature. You know, how we human, how we do interact in our community among ourselves. And yeah. I studied fine and applied art in school and um, uh, I also got to discover that art is what I'm supposed to do at a very young age and that's because you know growing up within um, in the midst of five sisters of course it's it's kind of you know I don't get to really interact with them so I'll just be on my own seeing movies you know creating just try to see how I can do something to just while away time. So I got to notice that arts was actually one of the things I do run to and then I get this fulfillment, I get this vibe to, to keep on creating. So I think my dad got to figure that out and it was very supportive. So everything went smoothly, I would say. He would go to school, bring me so, some things to work on, some things to practice with, probably even of his students should try something out, maybe a drawing, he would just bring it home and ask me if I could attempt something of such too. And of course, I'll just try it out. And from there, I got to develop much interest in art. I started art professionally around 2014, but the Ankara thing wasn't there at first. I started with pencil drawing, then I moved to painting, then digital painting, then mixed media, that is the um, combination of different materials or different mediums. And then, yeah, it was along the line that I got to like, I was able to get my niche, that is the Ankara of the thing. And from there, you know, I started working on it to perfect it in the way at which I could, you know, improve on. I trained under someone, Mr. Gyodo Badijo. He happened to be one of the best landscape artists I've ever come across. So um, that was um, around 2016. Uh, it was my industrial training as required of the school. It was the one that actually exposed me to a lot of possibilities in the art world. It do take me to galleries. It do, you know, it do create while I'm there with him. And so I got to learn so many things from him. And he literally inspires me a lot. He's more of like one of my biggest motivator. My hard works are actually unique based on the messages I pass across to people through the medium I use. So looking at it from the one behind me right now, um, it's titled Why Worry? And it's basically about, I got the inspiration from the Bible and that's because, you know, we as human, most times, if, if we find ourselves in some kind of situations, we get to like worry instead of focusing on the main thing. So the message I'm passing across through this particular art piece is that worry won't solve anything. It is important for you to figure out what the problem is, you know, reflect on it, then map out how to turn the problem into something productive. For me as an artist, for me as an individual, if I come across any form of challenging situation, I rather read my Bible and then figure out something relating to that thing happening to me at that particular moment or that challenge at that particular moment. Then from there, I get my answers on how to turn it into something productive. Presently, most of my artworks, if you get to see them, you will get to notice that there's some, there's a particular thing that is constant in almost every of my recent artwork, and that's the dove in it. Yeah, most of my artworks, my recent artworks has dove in it, and that dove symbolizes peace and it also symbolizes Holy Spirit, which in Yoruba is also known as Emimimo. It's kind of crazy because sometimes it takes um, two weeks, sometimes a month, and sometimes it takes days, but mostly it takes me three weeks a month. Yeah, most of the time. 
because it's this medium is very challenging. I have to really focus on whatever I'm trying to work on due to the medium I'm using. I can't just decide to just jump up one money and then start working. I have to, my mind has to be in a very state of calmness, like that calm state for me to figure out where I'm to work on. Uh, the longest time I've actually worked on a piece it is around a month. Yeah, a month to be precise. So I'm not saying that I'll work on the piece every day for a month. Of course, I, I get breaks in between because it can cause fatigue sometimes mentally, you know, physically, and sometimes emotionally. <laughs> because sometimes, uh, most times I feel my messages, I feel my artworks rather. I, I kind of um, bury myself into what I'm creating in terms of emotions. That's how I can really be able to connect with it and flow with it. So I have to take breaks in between and then, you know, figure out what I'm doing. And the, the longest I've ever done for now is a month. My best work out of all my pieces, uh, I would love to say that every of my arts, like artworks are the best because I get to experience different things for different arts. But, um, I can just say I have a favorite. I can say I have a favorite, yeah. And the favorite is titled Mimimo. It's a very simple piece, very, very simple piece, but with a lot of meaning. Like, meaning with depth. Yeah, and that's Mimimo. Then after that is um, different lanes, different destination, which is also here with me, right here in the studio. So um, that has to do with everyone coming to this world with different purpose. So we don't get to say that, okay, because um, a friend of mine is into so, so, and so, I want to also do the same thing. No, it doesn't work that way. So you have to really focus on what you really want to do. Get to know what you want to do first and focus on it secondly. Then from there, you get to find your path. You get to find your, discover your purpose. So that's basically what different lanes, different destination is all about, which is also one of my favorite pieces. Yeah, what I'm working on right now is a landscape art. And um, presently, there's no message to it. Presently, there's no title to it. And that's because most times, most times, I get my messages after I complete the artwork. I get my title after I complete the artwork. So it's a, it's a thing of, you know, flowing with the vibe. Yeah, let me just put it that way. So that's how I get my titles. That's how I get my messages divinely. Yeah, also I have to mention that because it's also very important. I get my messages divinely too. Sincerely, when I make mistakes, I just relax. I don't try to correct it immediately because I might end up, you know, building on the wrong path again. So I, I take my time to reflect where the mess, uh, where the um, error lies, and then I get to build from there. But that would take me probably hours or a day or two before I go back to it because I've been able to work on a piece for several hours and then you get to notice that there's an error like in the piece you know how that can really really stress you out mentally so i just take break and then rework it it's as simple as that but not as simple as that when i'm working on it <laughs> first of all when i got my artwork into twitter headquarters in new york and i just felt like wow i can really achieve anything i want to achieve in this life you know, focusing on the right thing, focusing on the right channel, building the right relationships. And of course, focusing on my roots, which is my relationship with the higher being or authority, which we popularly know as God. Um, getting the face is actually, for me, I would say it's simple and uh, that's because I've been practicing it like for a while. Starting with pencil drawing. It's the same concept with pencil drawing actually. But uh, there's a thing they call chiaroscuro in pencil drawing. That's light and shade. So your light and shade 
actually brings out the form. So looking at this, you get to see that there are different tones to this. Tone also known as light and shade, depending on the grade. From the lightest color, which is the highlights in art times, down to the middle tone, which is more of like the balanced one, then to the darkest part of it. That's how I do get to like figure out my forms. But it is mostly important for me to mention that I sketch them out first. Once I sketch them out, then I build on it. So I build on it using dark tone, varieties of tone or light and shade. Using white, white pops out a little, you know, it brings in that kind of, um, I won't call it 3D effects, but something similar to 3D effects. Then a middle tone, which is the yellow. Middle tone can be any color, depending on the color you are working with. So in this particular piece, the middle tone happens to be the yellow, the lightest yellow, then down to the dark side of it, which is the deep, like deep yellow, then down to the black and the red. But this particular one, it's in segments. Once you can be able to map out your forms through sketch and then build on it, it's very easy. For me as an artist, I don't know, maybe that will be general for every other person. But as an artist, it's very easy for me to just, you know, build on the form and make sure that it looks like what it's supposed to look like. In this regard, human form or a face. Focusing on your colors, it will help you build your forms. Yeah, it's, it's a very major thing to build your forms. So it's that form that will actually make it look more human. That's what will make it look live, like something is supposed to look like, the portrait aspect of it. I had my exhibition, solo exhibition recently. It was a two-day thing. I, I see it as one of my biggest accomplishments too, because I've been planning to do that for years now. And I was able to achieve that. And I'm so grateful to God for that.